G'day, I'm Raf and welcome to Prop Maker. This is the channel that helps you make stuff, restore stuff and repair stuff. This week we're going to continue on with my recent purchase of the Williams 1992 Fishtails pinball machine. It's got a problem. I bought it not running. It does this. It gives me a couple of uh, messages on there which actually look right. None of my switches are actually working on the console door and nothing seems to be working. I've got a couple of lights on the play field. It's dead. It's not looking right. Anyway, we're going to try and get it at least going and then we'll give you a full update on what we're going to do with this machine. Roll the thing. So what's actually going on here? We've got a few lights on the play field and we've got a few uh, lights at the top of the back glass, but not all the lights are actually on in that back glass. We've had a, a, a quick look through underneath the play field. There's no uh, burning marks or anything like that on any of the wires coming from the transformer. And so we're going to try and diagnose what's, what might actually be happening. Looking up the earlier error message that I had, which said check fuses F114 and 115, those two uh, fuses I've replaced, and so that message went away. What we've got to do now is still try and figure out what's actually going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the back glass, we're going to have a look at the boards and see whether we can spot anything untoward. Um, and then we're going to start testing around with our multimeter. So let's get to it. All right, so this is inside the fishtails cabinet and we're going to go through exactly what all this stuff is and we're going to see if we can diagnose what problem is going on. So. Down here we have our LED screen, which is called a DMD in pinball terms, and it's a dot matrix uh, display. So um, if we have a look in here, we've got a little clue up here as to what things are. So this is our dot matrix display controller. Over here, underneath these two ribbon cables, we seem to have our audio driver, so that's like our sound card. Over on this corner, we have what's called our Fliptronic, uh, Fliptronic controller board. Um, if I get any of this wrong, guys, it's because it's very, 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 uh, very, very new to this as well. Normally I'm working on, um, you know, uh, the older ones. So, so yeah, so we have, basically we've got our, our uh, dot matrix controller, audio board and Fliptronic, which actually looks after our flippers. Then down here, we've got a large board and this is actually the brains of the, of the whole thing. This is, basically our MPU or yeah, CPU if you want to call it that and so um, and then here is something that's called a power driver board now it gave me a couple of clues as to uh, when that we first turned on this that we had that check fuses issue and so the fuse that we had an issue with was this one down here which is F114 and we had an issue with this one, which was called F115. So what actually happens here is that we um, are getting voltage everywhere that we need to get, except right here on this, uh, this point here, we should be getting 12 volt and we're not. So that's 
one of the clues. I just noticed down here, if you have a look at the burn marks on that plug, not looking fun. So I'll probably end up having to repin and uh, and redo the uh, the plug for this for that particular plug anyway. So this is the sort of thing that you want to start looking for. So anyway, um, on these boards generally we have uh, things called test points, and they look like uh, this. So if we have a look under here. They look like just a little, almost like a nail hanging out of the board. So we've got one here. And underneath it, you can see that it actually reads that that one should actually uh, be reading 18 volt. Over here, just underneath this big capacitor, we have another one that says reads 50 volts. It should be thereabouts. Um, over here we have TP, or these are, they're called TP or test points. This one should read 5 volts, 12 volts. This one over here should be 12 volts. Um, is there any more? The TP4 must be around somewhere. I'm just missing where, the, where that might be. Probably hidden somewhere around there. Anyway, we're going to get our multimeter out and we're going to turn this on and we're going to see where, they, where the, we're getting our voltages. Alright, so I've got my multimeter out and I'm going to switch my volti uh, multimeter on to measure voltage. And what I'm going to do... Up a bit, so that should go back to zero. All right. So the first thing I'm do is I'm going to grab my ground, and I'm going to find some ground braid here and shove that under. And this one is the probe that we're going to use to see if the voltages are coming through. So I'm going to switch the machine on. And what do we notice first? We've got some LEDs, two bombs, and then another one. Looking at our LEDs on this board though, we've got an 18 volt light there. We've got a 28 volt over in there. We have a, an LED four, which is reading five volts there. And LED7 is also reading, oh, there's TP4 right underneath it. Um, so that one's actually on, so that one's looking okay. And, but we, do we have any LEDs that are out? Yes, we've got these two LEDs out here. So LED3 and LED2. Yes. So, first things first is let's just see one that we think might be working. So, if we make sure our, we got our test point, I'm going to touch my test point. This one should be reading 18 volts. And it's sitting at 16. That's still fairly good. Not not really exactly so 18 volts but it's on 16 looks pretty solid though then we'll have a look at this one this tp7 over here tp7 over here looks like it should be reading 20 volts so let's see if i can touch that let's see if it's reading 20 21 volts 21.4 so that's looking all right Moving along, we're going to look at TP3. That should be reading 12 volts. And at the moment, it's reading 0.43 volts. So not enough to power. The one next to it, which should be reading 5 volts, 
is reading 5 volts. This one up here called TP1 should also be 12 VU. Let's, let's see if I can get it. And that's reading 14 volts. So 12 volts getting to there. All right, so we did all the test points and we weren't getting any power to TP3 here. So I did a bit of uh, digging, we took the board out and I replaced this capacitor and I've replaced this voltage regulator and that particular capacitor had leaked behind the board and uh, I will cut to a shot now hopefully um, where uh, I could show you how I'd actually bridge uh, a trace just using some jumper wire it was the quickest way to do it um, and probably not the, the neatest way but I got it going so I was pretty happy with that uh, while I was there, I tested all the bridge rectifiers, all five of them, and they all uh, read okay. I did want to replace these caps. I haven't done that. I still may. Um, but, uh, but that was the main board. And at that point, once I did all of this, uh, where we replaced the uh, 7812 uh, uh, CV, and the 100 UF cap here, electrolytic, um, and fixed up the traces at the back that were corroded. I then got 12 volt here. I did a small problem though when I actually thought I'd lost 12 volt here, but all I had done was I forgot to plug in this plug. Anyway, so that was a bit of stupidity on my point. <laughs> anyway, but that's pretty good. So we've got that all going. Then, when I finally did kick it up, there was no sound. This is a soundboard here. And it gave me a report saying that uh, it, there was a couple of bells that you heard or bongs. It would bong, bong, and then there'd be a gap and there'd be another bong um, sound when you'd boot it up. And so, and then nothing, no sound at all. But the game would actually function. So uh, I then took that board out and went and visited Russell and Wayne and Russell and Wayne helped me out today and um, we did some diagnosis using Rusty's uh, fish tails that he's fixing up over at his, uh, his workshop. And what he allowed me to do was to test the CPU on the soundboard so I swapped that out in into his and uh, and it booted in his fine. So I knew it wasn't the CPU up here. I also then we tested whether it was um, the actual sound chip, the ROM chip, which is just under here. Now it's got a bit of green tape on it because the label fell off. I'm going to put that back where it should be um, in a minute. Um, but yeah, so, and the reason why I put the piece of paper on it is that there's a little window here and if UV light gets in there enough, it'll actually wipe the chip. It's a programmable chip. So, all right. So once I'd uh, put this particular thing into, um, uh, into Rusty's uh, fishtails board and put it into his system, it's, it again still, it worked. So I knew it wasn't both those chips. Um, I then, I think we tried one other thing. I think we tried this one. Um, yep, this one, and it still, it functioned normally in theirs, but if I took it out and put it in mine, put my board into Rusty's machine, it would still end up with the same issue. So, the last thing was actually listening to the bongs and the bongs gave me three, which said that it's a RAM error and this is this chip here. So I ended up having to 
slice this chip's legs off while it was on the board. Um, Wayne gave me a great tip. He said, don't try and pull the chip out by desoldering it from behind and trying to pull it all out at once, all the legs. Um, I'll never get them all perfect and it'll probably end up ripping the, uh, the vias or veers. Um, so his tip was to snap the legs off um, with some side cutters and, and then one by one, slowly pull out each one of the legs um, as you hit them up one at a time. And that gave me very clean veers, wires, what do you want to call them, the through holes. And I then put a socket in it and, and then put a new ram chip, which Rusty had lying around, which I'll replace for him shortly. And, and now that, that, so that's, um, that was done. The other thing that I did was down here where you see this um, plug that's got the burn marks. I actually took these two wires out and re-did uh, the pins um, so that they were with fresh wire. Um, they control uh, the GI or the general illumination. So, um, so anyway, if I put this back in place, put this back in place, shut this door, and let's turn it on. We have lights, we have sound, we have one bong, one bong we just heard. We still have a problem with its batteries not uh, keeping memory, but that's my next on the list. Anyway, so if I hit the old enter button. And there we go. We have sound. So if we put one credit in there and then we've got lots more to fix up. So a lot more to fix up, but we're getting there. So what's next? So yeah, this suspect uh, battery board uh, is a little bit crooked on that bottom one. So there. So I can, I can see that there's a bit of corrosion there. So we're going to rip that board out and replace it. So this is the MPU of the board out of the machine. Having a look at it, actually looks pretty tidy. The only thing is right here is corrosion. You can see, so. Right, so now I'm basically just adding some solder to each one of the pads um, that the battery holder is actually connected through uh, through the circuit board. And once I've added some solder to each one of those points, it's easier to desolder. Sounds counterintuitive. This tool I'm using is a desolder gun. It basically is a vacuum that heats up uh, the pad on the back of the circuit board and it basically vacuums out the molten solder as, a heat, as it's heated up. Once that's done, which uh, I think one of these pads gives me a little bit of aggravation but, um, and holds on, but it should just drop straight out. Um, 
So when I when it flip it over here, you can see that it's almost out. And I decided to grab the desolder gun and just heat up the pin from this side. And then it just immediately dropped out. After that, I just soldered a red wire to the positive hole and a black wire to the negative hole and hooked up my new battery holder, uh, new plastic one. And now I'm just testing uh, basically whether the voltage is actually making it through the circuit board. And it does. So we fixed the power driver board with a new capacitor and a new regulator and also fixed a trace up behind here. Fixed this by uh, the soundboard by adding a new chip of RAM and I've also uh, put basically ripped out the old battery uh, which had corroded and put this new one on and I'll put some fresh batteries in it as soon as I go to the shops later on. And that for now can just rest on the floor floor here we won't do any damage to anything um, but I may mount it up on the, uh, on the wall there on the wall wall just there anyway so that's looking good right to sum up what we've actually done just one last time we fixed our power driver board we fixed our sound board We've also fixed our MPU uh, to, so that the batteries uh, are actually working and actually retain the memory of settings. So all of that has been fixed. So what's actually next on the agenda for the fishtails? So what's actually next? What we need to do is address the problems on the play field. Now, just going to flip this camera around. So this play field is actually really, really dirty. And you can see down here what I'm talking about. If you have a look at the marks and uh, and things upon this play field, it's actually pretty grubby. Now I've got a whole bunch of um, uh, plastics that will replace a lot of the broken ones. Um, and so, you know, things like, you know, broke, broken ones here, broken sections that are actually missing. Um, on the play field, even, you know, this switch is actually incorrect, it shouldn't be here. Um, so we're going to fix that. And we're also going to um, look at fixing uh, the lighting at the moment. A lot of the lighting is pretty dim because it's using incandescent bulbs. In another future video, we're going to uh, look at putting LEDs, coloured LEDs, to brighten this play field up as it as it lights up. Um, we're also going to replace uh, the flashes in the system because some of them seem to be blown. Um, and then lastly, we're probably going to address uh, getting the fish working because he should be flapping just like the old... Uh, fish on a wall, the Don't Worry Be Happy fish, he does a, a bit of a flat. You can see that there is a solenoid coil there. Um, that's not functioning at the moment, although it seems to be hooked up. So, got to find out why that isn't working and how someone disabled it. I believe that the story goes is that it's very loud. So, that might be uh, another video where we, we get the fish working but we also uh, get it working so it's practically silent. So we'll see if we can uh, figure something out there using some foams or, or whatever, some materials to dampen the, uh, the flapping sound, but still have the movement. So that is currently the state of play for our fishtails. And we will uh, no doubt include you in everything that we do to get this actually up and operational um, and uh, and looking really 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 good so with that like and subscribe if you like these videos and yeah you know you've been watching prop maker roll that thing